So I move on. I move from that. And in this context, we discuss uh, this crackdown that we've seen on students uh, who have been effective in expressing and challenging the Biden administration's complicity in Israeli war crimes. And we highlight what we saw through uh, the eyes of journalists, through the eyes of student journalists who are learning to become media professionals. And this is an NPR correspondent who highlights from the past week. Uh, that was a, you know a six to 10 days ago that WKCR, uh, the M NYPD threatened this radio, this is student radio station, uh, and they were threatened to arrest the dean of the journalism school it's at Columbia University if he left the J school building. Also, at the New York Police Department said the same to all student journalists and journalism faculty who were taking refuge there, trapped inside what's supposed to be a monument to the free press, said Sandia Dirks. Uh, NPR correspondent speaking about attacks on student journalists at, at the Columbia University campus. Then there's UCLA. And at UCLA, it wasn't just that police were posing a threat to the ability of student journalists at the Daily Bruin, that's their newspaper, but they were also uh, a report uh, that these four student journalists were on campus when they were followed and then assaulted. Five to six assailants sprayed them with an irritant, so like bear mace, something like that, a pepper spray. As some reporters went to help a reporter that was pulled to the ground, assailants began to record on their cell phones humiliation. So then these people, the outside agitators that are on campus, the security, the campus security, they stand back and they do nothing to protect students who are enrolled in uh, the journalism program, the journalism program at UCLA. Continuing, um, this is a little bit harder to read, smaller, but I wanted you to see the picture here because it's the USC Director of Media Relations, Emily Gusema and her office uh, letting the LA press into campus and into an LAPD police line and providing statements on an eviction. They were evicting the encampment on USC. And while the USC student media was kettled and pushed out of view and denied any comment. So the student journalists who are supposed to be embraced and welcomed to learn how to do this job, uh, you, depending on your view of the media, they're gonna learn how elite journalists perform and pick up those rituals, or they're going to actually learn journalism on campus and perhaps be independent minded and learn to think for themselves and go out there and try to do something and make a meaningful contribution to all of our understanding of these global issues. Here on this campus, this school official did nothing to accommodate them and make sure that they were there to follow their fellow students. And why? Why? Why must that be? Because they would object to how their fellow students were being treated by the police. Um, they wouldn't know that they are not to question the police in a certain manner. I, I, I don't know. So the nation, and it was Amber Ekshen, um, did a article for the student nation section of the nation magazine. Um, I, I clipped a couple things from it. Uh, it's a good summary of the attacks on students. And then I'll get to uh, particularly Dartmouth. I want to highlight Dartmouth in uh, New Hampshire, an Ivy League school. Uh, the worst impacts, uh, the worst crackdowns on students happening on prestigious university campuses. The uh, media repeatedly mischaracterized pro-Palestinian protests on campus, uh, police and university administrations moved to attempt the uh, repression of student journalists. Uh, so that's, that's true. That's true that as you saw people talking about the uh, way in which, you know, they weren't given interviews, they weren't, Peggy Newton's Newton is complaining, how come 
these students won't talk to me. Uh, you've got tantrums thrown by Morning Joe. You have, uh, oh, you have Joe Biden uh, saying that uh, these campuses are, are, are basically hotbeds of anti-Semitism now. And everyone has forgotten, everyone has forgotten about the October 7th attack. Uh, well, these student journalists are truly doing the job that they are supposed to do and giving, uh, in some cases, a, a kind of 20 plus hours of continuous coverage of the threats that police are going to come in, run people off campus, they're going to uh, remove the encampment, the police are here when the police are here. I mean, you're getting a play by play of the police crackdown from these students in a manner that was not coming from the mainstream, from the mainstream media that was there. Uh, so I put this back up on the screen for you. Here is a clip from that Student Nation article. And to my knowledge, there was not a specific protocol or document in place protecting us as journalists, said Alessandra Dre Gonzalez, a reporter and a photographer and a videographer for the Dartmouth the newspaper on Dartmouth, uh, who was arrested alongside Dartmouth managing editor Charlotte Hampton while covering campus protesters uh, clash with police. Which, by the way, I don't like uh, that word. Protesters were not clashing with police. Police were coming in to attack this peaceful group of demonstrators. So I would beg the student nation to use other language and uh, I can say that as a former intern of the nation, um, I'll, 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 I'll play that card that I get to be a, a harsh critic uh, because I, I do know that this goes through an editing process and people think about the words that they choose carefully. So anyways, Gonzalez said, I identified myself as press multiple times and something that I keep going back to when I think about the night of May 1st and being arrested is that he took a picture of my press pass and there was still such a large disregard for my identity as a journalist. And that's true by and large that most of the police is an inconvenience to have to protect the rights of, of press but California also has a particular shield law that is supposed to and should cover these uh, journalists. So in UCLA's example, they they should have fared better. Um, I don't know if Connecticut has any kind of a law, but any of these states that have shield laws for journalists, some of that, uh, those, those laws should come into play in making sure that police are not allowed to get away with what they're doing to these students. They're supposed to uh, do more, uh, put in more effort to make sure that they um, are, are not harassed and intimidated and, and handled in this manner. Uh, Gonzalez added, actually, if anything, my arrest has made me love the field more. Journalism is so important. It's such a fundamental thing within our lives to be able to report on issues, big, small, local, national, or global, so that people can be informed. And that's truly great that this student journalist has that attitude. I hope they can remain that idealistic for as long as possible. Certainly doing it under this circumstance, uh, there is a possibility that um, they could you know, push onward and keep making an impact um, because they've seen the potential for what they do. But again, this was uh, uh, these were students at Dartmouth College that they were arrested. They were working for their school's newspaper. They were pulled um, from a group of journalists, even though they had press credentials, the police arrested and charged them with criminal trespass, and they later released them on bail, according to the Student Press Law Center. And the Student Press Law Center and some other media groups have been advocating for student journalists report that the county attorney, the assistant county attorney, uh, filed a motion to remove the bail con conditions. Previously, both of them had been barred from the green, which is the space where the encampment of these protests took place. 
and the administration building, and they had been banned from the president's residence, the U, the uh, college president's residence. They both expressed relief, and they told uh, the the school newspaper that the ordeal would not deter them from reporting. Um, and uh, then, following their arrests, the the newspaper demanded that the college apologize and do everything in its power to get the relevant authorities to drop the charges. Initially, the response from the college suggested that uh, they would do very little to stand up for the student journalists, but then after 15, 15 national press rights organizations sent a letter to Dartmouth President C. and Leah Balak, uh, there was then a column that the Dartmouth President ran in the school newspaper and acknowledged that the student journalists should not have been arrested for their doing their jobs and and that the college uh, would work with local authorities to ensure the error was corrected. Uh, but this is in real time an effort to silence the student journalists uh, and, and the letter that was signed uh, some of the leading foremost freedom of the press groups like the Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression, uh, as, uh, Student Press Law Center, Committee to Prep Journalists, College Media Association, Defending Rights and Dissent, Freedom of the Press Foundation, National Press Club, National Press Photographers Association, PEN America, Radio Television Digital News Association, Reporters Without Borders, the Society of Professional Journalists, and so on. And so these groups came and showed solidarity with someone who was trying to uh, become one of them, a professional, just like them. And I'm glad that they came and supported uh, those journalists 